Welcome to block four of the EQ7 Jumpstart Sew Along. This is the final lesson in the series, and this time we're going to explore some different quilt layouts for the four blocks that we've sewn in the series. Open up EQ7, and then click on the Open an Existing Project tab of the Project Helper window. Find the Jumpstart Sew Along project, click on it to select it, and then click the OK button. The project sketchbook will appear. If you're not already on the quilt section on the left, go ahead and click there now. And then notice that it says quilt one of three quilts at the bottom. That's because we've saved three quilts so far throughout this series, one for each of the three lessons. Use the scroll bar to move to the last quilt. It's the one with three blocks in it. And then click the edit button. The quilt is now on the quilt work table. Let's get our last block into the quilt and then print the pattern. Then we'll talk about some different layout possibilities for the sew along blocks. Click on the set block tool on the right and then click on the rolling stone block in the, in the palette. Remember, blue outline lets us know that's the selected block. Click in that last block space on the quilt and the block will pop into place. Now use your paintbrush tool to color the block. When you're happy with your fabric choices, click the Add to Sketchbook button. Now click the Select tool on the right toolbar and click the Rolling Stone block to select it. Remember to look for the green outline. Click the Print button on the top and choose Block from the drop down menu. Because we've already gone through printing rotary cutting charts, templates, and foundation patterns in the previous lessons, I'm going to show you the block printing style now. Several of these options are really more suited for applique blocks, but it still can be a useful tool for piece blocks as well. You can go back later and print one of the other printing options for actually piecing the block. The print dialog box appears with the block size tab selected. The block size that we set on the layout tab in the first lesson will automatically be selected. If you'd like to make the block a different size, Click the circle next to custom block size and type in your new sizes above. Choose one of the options under printing style. You can see examples of each of these styles in the blog post for this lesson. For this example, I'm going to choose showing fabrics. Now click the options tab and you can choose any of the different options available here. Click the preview button and this is what the printout would look like if, I, if you chose Showing Fabrics. If you'd like to print it, you can click the Print button or click Close and then Close again to return to the quilt work table. Click the Save button at the top. And now that we've got the basics out of the way for Block 4, let's start playing around with some quilt layouts. We're going to make a few different quilt layouts using the four sew along blocks. These layouts are just suggestions for the blocks. Feel free to use them however you like for your finished projects. For this first quilt, let's keep it simple and just add a couple of finishing touches. At the bottom of your screen, click the Layout tab. And under Finish Size of Sashing, check the boxes for both include, include Sash Border and Keep Width and Height Equal. Then drag the sliders to one inch. Now click the Borders tab at the bottom of the screen, and under Select a Border Style, click this little black arrow, and then choose Corner Blocks. Now under Lock Size Adjustments, make sure that All is checked, and then drag the size to 3 inches. Now click the Layer 1 tab, and use the paintbrush and or spray can tools to color the sashing and borders. If you hold down the control key on your keyboard when you click, all of the horizontal sashing will color at once. And now all the vertical sashing will color at once, which is a little hard to see since I'm using white, 
let me, if I hold down the control key and uh, color these little corner stones in the sashing, they'll all color at once. And I'm holding down the control key still and clicking on one of those corner blocks and they all color at once. The same goes for the big spaces on the sides too. If I just click here by itself, it's just one side. If I hold down the control key, all those borders will color at once. Now that I'm happy with my fabric choices, I'll click the Add to Sketchbook button. And here's a quick tip for finding the sizes of the borders and sashing strips. You use the same steps that you would for printing a rotary cutting chart for a block. Just click the Select tool on the right, click on a border to select it, and see that green outline shows that this is the part of the border that is selected. Then click Print, Rotary Cutting Chart, and it's very important when you're printing things for borders that you make sure that use size from quilt is, is selected because it automatically puts the size in for you and you're not thinking about it and trying to calculate it yourself. So click the preview button and if I zoom in here this lets me know that for that one side of the border I need to cut a strip that's three and a half inches wide by 21 and a half inches long. I'm going to click the close button and close again. And we know this quilt is square, so all four sides would be the same size. You can always find the overall finished size of your quilt here at the bottom of your screen. So now that we've got our first quilt layout done, let's try something totally different. Click Quilt on the top menu bar, New Quilt, On Point. Click the Layout tab at the bottom of your screen. And here is the on point layout palette. I want to select the second on point style here. And for number of blocks, I want to set both horizontal and vertical to two. For finish size of blocks, I'm going to leave it at nine because that's what I sewed all of my sew along blocks at. So I want to make sure that this layout fits my already finished nine inch blocks. Now click the Borders tab, and I don't really want to border on this quilt, but I do want to set something that looks like binding on the outside of my quilt. So under Border Style, I'm going to choose Mitered, and I'm again make sure that all is checked so it changes all the sizes at once, and I'm going to take it down to a half an inch, just so that it looks like binding, but I'm not actually going to put a border on that's this small. Now click the Layer 1 tab, and click the Set Block tool on the right, and now we can set all of our blocks back into the layout. Now the way block colorings work in EQ7 is that they are stacked on top of each other. So if you want to use a coloring of a block that you don't currently see here in the palette, click on the block to select it, and then right click and choose select coloring and then it will show you all of the different versions of this block that you have available. They'll always start with a line drawing, grayscale, and then this was the coloring that was shown in the block library from when we first uh, copied it from the block library and then this is my fabric version here. And you'll notice that this block here doesn't have any fabric, it just still has the solid colors from the block library. And that's because that's the original twin star block that we used to create this block here. And so this one I've never set into a quilt layout or colored with fabric, so that's why you still see the solid version there. Now you can use the coloring tools, the paintbrush or the spray can tool, to color those uh, setting triangles and the mitered border. And when you're done, click Add to Sketchbook. All right, one more layout, and this time we're going to make it a little bit modern. So on the top menu bar, click Quilt, New Quilt, Vertical Strip Quilt. Click the Layout tab at the bottom of the screen, and you can see that the first strip is selected because it's gray. And we're going to delete this first one, so come over here and click the Delete button. And now with this new first strip selected, we're going to keep the strip style as plain. We're going to change the width to 6 and the length to 36. 
Now click the second one to select it. And this time we're going to change the strip style to pieced blocks. Change the width to 9 inches. The length will stay the same. And then change the number of blocks along the length to 4. Now click on the third strip to select it. Leave it as plain. Change the width to 18. And the length again will stay the same. Now click the layer 1 tab and click the set block tool on the right toolbar. Now you can select a block in the blocks palette and place it into the pieced block squares in the second strip. Now switch to the paintbrush tool and color those plain strips and the borders. When you're happy with the way it looks, click the Add to Sketchbook button. Now look how quickly we just designed three more quilts using our sew along blocks. Let's go admire our work in the sketchbook and add some information to the note cards. Click the View Sketchbook button and then make sure that you're on the quilt section on the left. Down here at the bottom are the View buttons and click on the one that allows you to see four quilts at a time. Click on the first variation that we made this one here that has the sashing and the cornerstone border. And notice that down here it says unnamed. Click the note card button. Now every quilt and block and fabric and whatnot in EQ7 has a note card attached to it. It's a handy place to keep notes about your project. Plus it's helpful to give your quilts names so that you can tell them apart in the sketchbook if you have a lot of different variations going. So you'll see that your cursor is already blinking up here on the name line. So go ahead and type jump start quilt variation 1. You can also click down here under the word notes and add more information about your quilt. Click the X up here in the top right corner. And now you'll see that instead of unnamed, it says Jumpstart Quilt Variation 1 here. Click the Close button to put the sketchbook away and return to the quilt work table. The vertical strip quilt that we last worked on should still be on the work table, but if it's not, click the View Sketchbook button and edit it from there. I want to show you one more printing option available in EQ7, and that's the Fabric Yardage. Click the Print button and choose Fabric Yardage from the drop-down menu. In the dialog box that appears, you can choose your width of fabric, and you have all these different options to choose from. And if you don't use the standard quarter inch for seam allowance, you can change that too. Click the preview button, and here's what the fabric yardage chart looks like. I'll click the zoom in button, and draw a box around here so we can take a closer look at it. Here's the fabric swatches, the number of patches used in the quilt, and the yardage estimate for those fabrics. You can click the print button if you'd like to print now or click close and then cancel to return to the work table. Click the save button and then close EQ7. You've made it through all four blocks of the sew along. Congratulations! I'll meet you back at the blog on Friday, June 27th to share your finished block four.